introducing first, in the blue corner, standing five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. This man has an MMA fighting style, and he's fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He's representing Red Schaefer MMA Academy and holding an undefeated record of three wins, zero losses. He is Edric Kennedy. And his opponent in the red corner, standing five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. This man has a stand-up fighting style, and he's fighting out of Lexington, Minnesota. He's representing Mankato and the Spartan Martial Arts Academy and holding an undefeated, immaculate, ever dangerous record of four wins, zero losses. He is Max, the gold standard Clifford. Max Clifford, clearly Max, Max. the crowd Max. favorite tonight here at the Higher Regency. Ross Ogden, our referee for this Bantamweight affair. Yeah, I'd like to point out. I'd like to point out that some of these records a little bit off. Uh, a lot of these guys will take fights out on, on a reservation and unsanctioned events. It'll certainly be a win, but it won't be a recorded one. And here we go. You take away reservation wins, you take away MMA careers from oh, some man, people. I hear you. Adric Kennedy in the black with gray. Yep, this is the first time I am seeing Adric. Uh, trains with Red Schaefer, UFC veteran, uh, down in Milwaukee. So you have to assume he's somewhat, uh, at least, uh, capable on the ground. Yeah, Red Schaefer, a fantastic fighter when it comes to the arts of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. We see Kennedy launching some strikes here. Yeah. Forcing Clifford to back up. I'm actually very impressed with his hands already. Bantamweight's so quick in the cage. Referee Os Ross Ogden. Uh, has a lot to uh, keep up with. What's crazy was, I mean, we, what, two years ago we didn't even have this weight class? About five or six years ago, the UFC didn't even have 55 pounders. No. Oh, look like, was that, was that to the body that dropped him? It was, uh, it wasn't low to the body, it was right under the uh, left shoulder of Max Clifford. Kennedy trying to capitalize here, stacking, right and got some punches back out of the closed guard. Control his posture. The crowd rallying behind Max Clifford here. Yeah, Max is actually, uh, he hasn't fought in a while. I'd say about a year. Uh, he's 4-0. Two of the fights I saw were actually awarded Fight of the Night awards. He, uh, he sets a high pace, but... Overhooks Max! Boy, Adric Kennedy is having his way here. Right now, just kind of picking his shots, being very calm, very making sure calm. that he doesn't waste anything. First shot at the body. You don't see a lot of shots at the body from the ground. No, you really don't. Underutilized. Body, body, head. That's what he's doing right here. Yeah, Underutilized on the feet, as a matter of fact. Kennedy stacks. He tries to pass the half unsuccessfully. Clifford here also, you know, making sure that he's not taking any unnecessary damage. Yeah, it's smart. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of guys, the adrenaline's running here. Max is just trying his best to feel him out, but Adder's going full force. Kennedy doing a great job really setting everything up. He right really hand is. to the body and then coming over to the top to the head. But oh. uh, Yeah, I'm very impressed with Adder Kennedy. He looks pretty comfortable whether it's on the feet, ground. Now we're back to the feet. Kenny said, let's go back to the feet. Let's, let's stand in exchange again. TJ DeSantis along with Andrew Studer here. Bantamweight Affair, part of downtown Throwdown 10 here at the Hyatt Regency in Minneapolis. Appreciate you watching the stream on sterlingmn.com. Scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Definitely got to be approaching the latter minutes Letter seconds, letter moments, if you will, of this uh, first round. I would say that's a good guess. Nice lead left kick, or right kick to the lead left leg of Clifford. Kennedy goes high and misses. There's the clapper. This round's gonna expire, a solid round for Adric Kennedy. Speaking of solid, Max landed a solid left hook there to close the round. Adder Kennedy, you know, ha had some moments on the feet, but I think ultimately, you know, the takedown, and you know, he didn't do a lot from top position, but yeah, controlled the pace of the fight. Uh, he'll probably get the nod in the judges' scorecards, but I think Max Clifford's still far from out of this contest. Yeah. Bantamweights, they're, they're so quick, they're so 
versatile with their uh, attack that, I mean, really, it's a shame that this is an amateur fight because th these guys should be afforded uh, a full 15 minutes, but uh, settling for nine tonight, and I think we're gonna get uh, a solid another round of action. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I would also be uh, interested to see who has the uh, better knees and elbows, which we won't be able to see here in an amateur fight. But amateur mixed martial arts, different rules in different markets, but definitely there's a need for it. Uh, I just wish it was a little more uniform throughout yeah, the country. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I know out in New Jersey, uh, some of the amateurs are actually forced to wear shin pads and, and uh, yeah, some That's a little ridiculous. It's a little much, but you know. At least it's a format, and it's a format that didn't right. exist, you know, not too long ago. We're getting there. And uh, we are about underway. Ross Ogden starts round number two between Max Clifford and Adra Kennedy. And Max coming out, uh, pushing the pace here. Don't want to get caught flat-footed uh, when you're fighting as a Bantamweight because these guys move so quickly that you hesitate for a second. That's an opening. Yeah. Right hand lands for Clifford. Really bobbing and weaving. We see we see a much more loose and confident Max Clifford here in round number two. Who would you consider the faster of the two? <laughs> They're Bantamweights, man. Everybody's fast. <laughs> Which Lamborghini's faster? You know, I've had the pleasure of calling fights with Ian McCall, who's a flyweight. And these guys, these guys throwing wow. here. I mean, it's hard to keep up with phantom weights. It's, it's even harder to keep up with flyweights. Yeah, I'd like to meet the uh, the play-by-play -play guy who can keep up with phantom weights, flyweights. An auctioneer. That's <laughs> that's what they <laughs> Pretty are. Pretty much. Left go. hook followed by an uppercut for Max Clifford. Kennedy yeah. just shaking it off, saying, no, that didn't hurt me. Usually that means it did. Yeah, you would have to assume so. Certainly don't want to get hit with the uppercut. Oh, nice jab sneaks in there for Max. Clifford has really kind of taken over this fight, at least here in the second round. Yeah, but, you know, a lot more um, aggressive with his punches, and they seem to be finding a target. Yeah, not uh, really backing up. He, he pretty much backed up the entire first round. I don't know if it was more of a feeling out process than anything else. But Hard to have a feeling out process when you're only allotted nine minutes for yeah, an entire fight. Right. It was like uh, Clifford was kind of complaining of shot to the back of the head. Not much you can do when you're hitting the back of the head. I mean, when guys are moving, and it's definitely right. not intentional on the feet. Clifford throws out a kick, but nothing there. Clifford's used the jab quite a bit in the second period. Yeah, Clifford's uh, corners calling him for, uh, to use his range, uh, pump out the jab a little bit more. Adra Kennedy kind of trying to solve the puzzle of Max Clifford in this middle period. Yeah, I don't think either guy has actually seen video of the other coming into the fight. Uh, it was just sort of a look up their records, see what kind of guy they Ooh, are. Ooh, that was a vicious kick to the lead leg of Clifford. Yeah, which he uh, seems to have a knee brace on. Doesn't necessarily mean he's injured, but definitely right. uh, a, a target there yeah. for Kennedy. You'd have to certainly assume that uh, he suffered a past injury. A guy like Boss Rutten would always, uh, if he had an injured knee, would wear the neoprene sleeve on the oh. uninjured leg. Oh, uh, there you go, smart. Frank Shamrock, also uh, a master of that craft. Frank Shamrock, uh, UFC Hall of Fame, oh well. Dana White, if you are watching, Andrew Studer has some words for you. Well hey, listen, if we're, if we're throwing Ken Shamrock into the Hall of Fame, throw Frank in there. End of the second round. Who do you give that round to, TJ? Definitely we're gonna give that round to Mash Clifford. I have this fight even going into the third period. A fantastic fight. Uh, regardless of who wins tonight, um, yeah, I'd like a rematch when yeah, they're both pros. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. But uh, I wouldn't say it's a rush for either guy. I think, uh, you know, both only have three, four amateur bouts. Right. I'd like to see a guy maybe get, at this point, you know, we have uh, somewhat of a, you know, not a, a unified uh, collective rules, but, uh, just a decent uh, way to feel yourself uh, kind of get into the game here, the professional game. You mentioned not a rush for either of these guys. I think this final round might be a sprint, however. Yeah, I would. As, I mean, this fight's up for grabs. And, uh, you know, if you just have a, you know, 10 seconds of dominance in this th final round, uh, that might be enough to give uh, one fighter the, the nod over the other. Tom Schmitz in the corner of Max Clifford tonight. Tom Schmitz himself, a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, under Pedro Sauer. Seconds out, round three underway here as referee Ross Ogden about to uh, start everything. A little hesitant as uh, Clifford comes out a little bit too early, but uh, Touch of sends the him back and, and we are underway. 
Now we're really seeing Clifford use, utilize movement. Yeah. Oh, uppercut. Wow. These guys are just throwing. This is Rock'em Sock'em Robots at this point. I'm quite certain both corners told them you need this round, go out and get it, and they're absolutely following orders. We are the benefactors of a fight that is up in the air at this moment. Again, TJ DeSantis along with Andrew Studer, SEG, and Driller Promotions present Downtown Showdown 10 here at the Hyatt Regency. Still this fight up for grabs. The movement of Clifford is just, he's really on his horse here. He's, he's getting in and out, and, and uh, Kennedy really not able to connect with anything on the inside. Yeah, uh, Max actually landed a nice right to the body there. See a nice parrying attack from Clifford as well. Yeah. I mean, for a kid who hasn't fought in more in a year, he's, he's handling himself quite well against a more informative opponent. Oh, Kennedy came low with a, a right hand to the body. That was very nice. Very nice. Is that uh, Red Schaefer in Adric's corner? I cannot see from my angle. Looks like it, though. Yeah, if I were a Betty man. I know you are. I am. And this fight's still up for grabs. Oh, oh very oh, nice man. leg kick there from <laughs> Kennedy. Tries to fire off another one. Clifford able to just back straight up and get away from it. If you've never been kicked by a mixed martial artist who knows what they're doing, you're lucky. Yeah. Two men meet there, both with powerful shots. Looks like Kennedy has landed the better of the last couple of exchanges. Entering the final minute of this Bantamweight affair. Kennedy coming forward. He seems to be the aggressor in this is. round. Max still working a lot behind his jab, trying to set something up. Adric's just coming in, guns blazing. Probably get a uh, better game plan at this point when you're down around with only one left. It's kind of a shame because I mean I, I I don't know if if this fight does go the distance I don't know if we honestly will get a clear winner. Clifford lands a nice left hand. Yeah, at this point I would I would say it's Adric's fight, a draw. You know, I don't think we're quite there yet. If Max turns it up here in the last 30 seconds, it's a three minute round though. It's so hard yeah. to really see what guys have, but. Uh, Definitely Kennedy in uh, in control of this final period. Final moments closing in here. Clifford's going to need something to try to steal this round. Ten final seconds. ten seconds here. Another straight sends Max rocking back. What a great fight. Very good. A fight. lot of action here in the bantamweight division. We saw it on display tonight. Adric Kennedy with Max Clifford. I, I lean towards Kennedy, but by the narrowest of margins. Yes, I, I, I completely agree. He also had that knockdown in the first round. Not that we're uh, scoring overall performances, but. When you break it up in the 10 point must system, definitely things are different, but uh, solid stuff. Uh, I mean, again, it, it's an amateur fight, which yeah. I mean, tonight pride means a lot, but you know, fight purses really aren't affected by it. Uh, these guys no. are doing it for the love of the game. Yeah. And uh, I, honestly, I don't think either one of these guys really lost tonight. Both, really, both showed yeah. some really promising skills as amateurs. And this was easily the biggest fight of Max's career. Uh, he's sort of been working on the Brutal Genesis circuit locally. It's uh, sort of the lower end amateur scene. Making the jump up here to Driller Promotions. Good showing in his debut. Adder Kennedy, a very uh, polished performance here in his Driller debut. I've had the pleasure of coming to a few of your shows here, and uh, you know, I, I had about five years where I didn't go to local shows. Yeah. Let's just say the scene has changed for, for the better. Yeah, I remember you back uh, during the days of the uncommissioned Rochester Battle at the Barn events. I've uh, got stories, my friend. I can uh, I can only imagine uh, judging or commentating for the likes of Clay Guida, uh, Jed Dino. That's right. Uh, Jed Dino's fought for you, hasn't he? He has not, but uh, we plan on bringing him up. He just came back to the sport, actually, a couple months ago. That's interesting. Mixed martial arts has changed a lot since the uh, days of uh, the <laughs> Dino brothers. Since the days of... The Dino trifecta down yeah, in Rochester. Yeah, there were three of them. They were yeah. sort of the uh, the slap shots of uh, Minnesota MMA. Uh, but, yeah, I mean... I won't go that far. I, right. But, I mean, back, I remember back in the day going to shows with you. You see guys getting into the cage, tennis shoes, basketball shorts, a little wife beater maybe, uh, you know... The gloves were always a little bit different. It was a ragtag operation, but uh, it was necessary. Certainly some good fighters uh, rose from the uh, 
from the days of the old uncommissioned Minnesota MMA, Nick Lentz being one of them, uh, even Jacob Volkman. Sammy Morgan. Tom Spear. Tom Spear. You could say Clay Guida. Clay Guida fought in Minnesota, I, I believe, three times. A lot of the Gilbert grappling guys. Uh, yeah, that's right. That Josh Neer came up from the, mid the Midwest he here. Did. Tommy Lee, another one. Not a lot of people talk about Tommy Lee. He's a. It's been a while. I know yeah. he, he got a shot in the WEC. Yeah. And well, the judges have added the tens and nines, and we are going to go up to uh, Mike Majuk for our official wow, decision. What a fight! Let's hear it for both these fighters, ladies and gentlemen. And now, after the completion of three rounds, the judges have reached their decision. Judge Carl Ball scoring at 29-28. Clipper, Judge Joe Phipps scoring at 29-28. Kennedy, and Judge Andy Kemp scoring at 30-27. And winner by split decision, Adrian! Kennedy! Andrew Kennedy getting the nod by split decision. I agree with the decision. However, I, I don't think you can score a 30-20.